Hello and welcome to another tutorial from LydiaHawk.com. If you like my videos, please subscribe and hit the bell for instant notifications. This hat is a very happy accident. A friend's husband had a birthday in a few weeks. I knew it was going to be a surprise party. I knew we were going to be sitting around a campfire. He has everything. I thought, well, instead of a birthday hat, what if he wears a Viking helmet? So I found a free pattern, great pattern, calls for worsted weight yarn. I basically waited until the very last second to make the hat, which meant that I couldn't make the hat according to that pattern. And I will link to that in the description below. So I spent a sleepless night the day before his birthday trying to figure out if I had something else that I could just give him. Nothing really fit the bill. And then as I woke up that morning, I thought, you know, if I could just adapt this hat to bulky yarn, I can make it in a couple of hours. I certainly didn't have several hours to do it, but a couple hours I could, I could manage. So that's exactly what happened. And in fact, when I went to find the materials for this hat, I had Lions Brand Dallas Gray. I already had Lion Brand Homespun New York White, and I already had some Buttercream Glossy and Silver. What I didn't realize was that I did not have enough of one shade of gray or silver to make the entire hat, but again, because of that, what I find is that this as the base and this as the accent was perfect. It came out way better than I ever could have possibly imagined. So that's how I'm going to recreate this. The only difference between this picture and the hat that I'm going to make is that I'm also going to use this as the base accent for the horns. It's going to look amazing. <laughs> and this picture doesn't really do it justice. Um, I need a better picture. This, this, is a, this is a really beautiful Viking helmet. And because the original pattern is free, this pattern is also free. So the first thing we're gonna need is the pattern. Just go to LydiaHawk.com in the top toolbar, find free patterns, scroll down till you find it, submit your name and email, and you'll get the free PDF. We're also going to need an end hook. We're going to need colors, bulky yarn, white. Again, this is Lion Brand Homespun New York White. Lion Brand Homespun Dallas Gray. Uh, but any bulky gray, size 6 will work. And Joanne Fabric usually carries this. Um, I used the last of what I had on his hat, so I had to order this, but uh, buttercream, glossy, and silver. But it is a size 7, and it's just got this, it's just a gorgeous silver. You could technically make the whole hat with just this one color, but again, I really like it as more of an accent. We're also going to need doll stuffing. We're going to need tapestry needle. We're going to need a stitch marker. A scrap piece of yarn will work also. Um, I like my tutorials to be how to from beginning to end so that if you don't know how to crochet you can learn how to crochet during this. So let's start with the slip knot. So we're going to start with a slip knot. You want to leave about six inches for your tail for weaving in the ends. So flip it so this longer piece is on top and then go through the, that hole with your index finger and your thumb and pull the longer piece of yarn through. Now put it around your hook and tighten it down. We're going to start by making a ring. It says chain four, slip stitch into first chain space, creating a ring. So chain four, we'll just wrap new thread around and pull it through four times. One, two, three, 
and four. Now we're going to go through the very first chain space, making a ring, forming a ring. We're going to pull that through. It's a slip stitch, so we're going to pull this new thread through the first chain space and also the loop on our hook. So now we've got a hole, round one, single crochet six into ring. So single crochet is you go in through your ring, you go into the, go into the center, pull new thread through. Now you've got two loops on your hook. Now pull another piece of thread through both. That's one single crochet. And we'll do that five more times. Two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to slip stitch into our very first single crochet space right here, right in front of us. We'll go in through both of these loops, pull new thread through that and the loop on your hook, then chain one and then place your marker. This will help us keep our place. It's called crocheting in the round. Round two, two single crochet into each stitch around. So we're going to end up with 12 instead of six. We're making an increase here. So we're going to go into the very first single crochet, both loops. We're going to pull our new thread through and then through two loops. So that's one. We're going to go into the exact same stitch and do that again. So we've made our first increase and we're going to increase in every stitch around. So now that we have 12 stitches, we're going to remove our stitch marker. We're going to go into that spot, that one single crochet space, slip stitch, chain one, and place our marker. Round three, single crochet one. So we're just going to single crochet one in the very first, next, unworked single crochet space. Two in next, so another increase. And then repeat to end. So we're going to end up with 18 stitches, so we're going to single crochet one. Now we're going to single crochet two, and we're going to keep doing that to the end. Got 18 stitches, so we're going to remove our marker, slip stitch, chain one, place marker. Round four is almost identical to round three, except that we're allowing for two single crochets before we increase. And as you can see with round five, seven, and nine, we're just steadily increasing. Except for round six, we're single crocheting 30 stitches. But basically we're just making these increases and then round 10 through 14, we have 42 stitches and we're just going to single crochet 42 stitches. Since this is all very monotonous, we're gonna pick this up. For the young adult size 20, we're gonna pick up with round 15. There will be another larger size included in this pattern, but it's the same principle. So we're going to pick up wherever it says switching to color B, because that means that we're done with the crown of the helmet. Picking up where we switch our color, which is round 15 for the smaller size 
and will likely be around 17 for the larger size. What I like to do, once you get to the very end, Instead of completing that very last single crochet, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and join the color before I finish the last round. So in the very last stitch, just back up if you have to, and pull your new color through. Make sure you've got a long tail for weaving in the end. And now, after we have joined it, we're going to slip stitch, chain one and place marker. You can just switch to the color, but that's, that's just, yeah, if that's not what the instructions say, then that's not what I'm going to do. single crochet 42 in front loops of single crochet stitches. So the anatomy of a single crochet stitch is two loops. We're going to go just into the front loops, which means the one closest to us. So we're going to just that front loop. Forty two times. So three, four, remove marker, slip stitch, chain one, place marker. Round sixteen. Chain two is first double crochet. So we're going to Remove our marker. All right, we've chained one, actually. That's where I'll start. Slip stitch. We're gonna chain two instead of one. One, two. That first chain two counts as the first double crochet. This is where we're gonna get into bobble stitches. Double crochet five. So a double crochet is a longer stitch. In order to perform a double crochet, and we're going to work in both loops at this point. We're not going into just the front. We're working both. So we yarn over and then we go into our single crochet space. We pull pull the new yarn through then we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, and then we're going to yarn over again and pull through the last two loops. So again, yarn over, go through your single crochet stitch, pull new thread through, you've got three loops on your hook, yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over again and pull through two. That is a double crochet. So we've got two, So it's six altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to perform a bobble stitch. Yarn over. You're going to perform a double crochet. Pull your yarn through and then pull through two loops and don't finish it. Instead, yarn over again, go through the exact same stitch, pull through pull through only two loops and do it again. And you're going to keep doing this until you have six loops on your hook. We're just going to go through two. 
And once I get into it, just to make sure I don't go through more than two loops, I start to do it a little more slowly because this is thick yarn and it gets really hard to work. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We're going to do it one more time. It can, get, it can become difficult to see the loops. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're going to pull through all six loops. And then just push it forward with your, with your finger. Double crochet six. So now we're going to double crochet six. One, two, three, four. five, six. And again, you just push it, push it out. And now we're going to perform another bobble stitch. Yarn over, go through the next single crochet space. Pull through two and keep going. Yarn over, insert, pull through only two. Careful because it's easy to pull through more than that. One, two, three, four, five. Keep going till you have six loops on your hook. and then pull through all six. If your yarn gets a little hard to manipulate, just take your time. Back up if you need to, redo your work. There's our second bobble stitch. Then we're gonna repeat six double crochet. Now we just join by slip stitching into that marker space, chain one, place marker. Single crochet 42 in front loops of single crochet stitches. And then we slip stitch, cut our yarn, leaving a long enough tail to weave in the end, and bind off. Now we're going to make our horns. We're going to start with color C, which is our white. We're going to slip knot. So take your yarn, flip the top, go in with your index finger and your thumb and pull that longer top piece of yarn through. 
chain four. One, two, three, four. Slip stitch into that first chain space. I'm going to go ahead and place a marker here so we can keep our spot. Go into the ring and single crochet four. Slip stitch into our first single crochet. Chain one, place marker. Round two, single crochet one. Two single crochet in the next, so we're working our increase. One, two, single crochet into the next. Stitches can be hard to see because it starts pretty tight. And then two into the last one, two. Now this is our, the inside here is the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and push this out. This is the side we're going to want to see. And then I will slip stitch, chain one and place marker. This is the very tip of our horn. Round three, single crochet one. Two and next. One, two. Single crochet two. One, two. And then Two single crochet and next one, two single crochet one for eight stitches total. Slip stitch, chain one, place marker. Rows four and five, we're going to single crochet eight. Round six, single crochet one, two into next, single crochet three. Two into next, and then single crochet two. Single crochet ten, I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and tuck that tail in. You're not going to see it. So get it out of the way. Single crochet one, two and next. So we work our increase. Single crochet four, two in next, single crochet three. So that's 12 all together. Now we're going to create the bend in our horn. Two single crochet. So we're going to increase in our very first stitch. One, two, single crochet four. One, two, three, four invisible decrease. An invisible decrease. So a decrease is where you go in to your first stitch, you yarn over. Instead of finishing, you go into the second stitch and yarn over and then you pull both through. That's a decrease, but an invisible decrease, you just go through the front loops of each one. So you go through the front loop, the loop closest to you, yarn over, pull through, you have two loops on your hook. Now go into the very next stitch, front loop only, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through all three loops on your hook. But try not to mess it up like I just did. And then we're going to single crochet five, go through both loops of the next stitch, single crochet five, one, two, three, four, five. You can already start to see the bend that it creates. You do that a few more times and you get a nice horn shape. So, so we increase the very first stitch one, two, Single crochet four, one, two, three, four, invisible decrease, front loops only, one, two, and then single crochet five, one, two, three, four, five. Now we're getting a nice bend. We're going to do this for two more rows. So come back after two more rows. All right, now I'm going to join this collar before the end of row 12. So on the very last stitch, I'm going to join the collar. 
pulling it through two loops on my hook. And then I'm going to slip stitch, chain one, and place marker. Round 13, with color V or A, but I'm going to use this as my accent for the base of the horn. Single crochet two, one, two, and then two into the next, one, two, and then repeat all the way around. And then we slip stitch and cut a nice long tail because we're attaching the horn to the hat, we're going to need a really long tail. So I'm going to measure out approximately two feet, maybe more like two and a half, two and a half, three feet. And then bind off. And now we just need one more horn and we're ready to attach to the hat. And I would take, I'd take the doll stuffing and just little pieces at a time so that it's nice and evenly distributed. So our, our seam is back here, tail is back here. This is going to be the back of our helmet. Um, if you don't have a mannequin head, which I would suggest using to get the horns exactly where you want them, uh, you can you can guess. So here's our back. Here's our back piece of thread. I spaced it so that one of the bobble stitches is right directly in front. If you fold it in half like this, then you can see where the exact opposite sides of the hat are. When I put the last one together, I counted about five stitches up So let's go ahead and do that. Working with this yarn, the silver yarn can be a little tricky. It's not like the it's not like the Lions brand yarn. It's put together in sort of a chain fashion. So as we weave in the ends, you'll see what I mean. With regular yarn, you can usually just pull right through. But with this yarn, you have to be careful. You don't want to... I'm going to count rows. One, two, three, four. I think four was pretty accurate. So if we... If we, try, if we start to gauge this, if you don't have a mannequin head and you want to gauge where to put the horns, I would suggest about right there. You want them on equal and opposite sides. So basically one, two, three, it's so maybe three rows up from color A at the base. Which puts this area about, let's see, one, two, about three rows from the top. So that's where I'm going to go in with this first horn. And 
I think it is safe to say that that's pretty good. But the horns aren't perfectly matched. So the knot on this horn is a little more towards the front and on this one it's a little farther back. But about three stitches from the top and I think we're good. So I'm going to start with that. And then right next to it, I'm going to come up and go into this next single crochet space. If you go through this yarn and it snags for any reason, it's safe to say don't try to force it. Because of the nature of the yarn, the chain-like way it's put together, it's just not a good idea to try to force it through. I would take the needle out and just keep reinserting it until it goes in smoothly. So, so far I've gone in in a way so let's just I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So that doesn't want to go through. I'm not I'm not finding a clean spot, so I'm going to take my needle out and I'm going to reinsert it until I've got a nice clean spot. This one's a little difficult to find. There we go. And don't weave in the ends until you've tried the hat on and it looks right because you might need to take the horns off and redo your work. So, so far, see it doesn't want to go There we go. So far that looks pretty good. Now we'll use this first horn as a marker for our other horn. We just want to make sure it's evenly spaced. We want to make sure it's symmetrical. And that's making a really nice accent. I like the lighter color for the rim of the hat and the horns. If you need to put a little bit of stuffing in at the end to make it more firm, there's a a little bit of opening left. Mine's pretty good though. I got plenty of stuffing in it. Okay. So that looks pretty good. And then on the inside, we are going to want to, you can, if you've got enough thread, you could go around a few more times, but I think it's going to be enough to weave in the ends. So just find the stitches to insert the ends through. And you want to get it nice and secure. I'm just going to be kind of random here. I got plenty of threads. There's no reason to not secure it well. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the, I'm not really an expert at weaving in ends. There is an art to it. Um, 
I tend to lose my patience. But this is the inside of the hat, so I'm not too worried about how it looks. I just want to make sure that it's nice and secure. It's the first horn, so, and I like the position, so it won't be the one that I have to fix. All right, so now we're going to take the second one, and we are going to try to match symmetrically exactly where it is supposed to be relative to the first horn. So we came about, so this is one row, two, three, four. Four. So one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. So we're about right here, but our horn isn't in the same place. I think what I want to do is use my stitch marker. I'm going to use a stitch marker. I'm going to go in right here. because this appears to be the exact opposite side. And then one, two, three, and then four up, precisely on the other side, looks like it's going to be right here. So I'm going to find another way to mark this. You can use scrap yarn, but I have a stitch marker, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. This appears to be the perfect opposite side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, so there's three open there, three open here. Exact opposite side actually be probably one more over. So that appears to be perfect. Now the, my, my end pieces are in different spots, but as long as it looks like that, I should be able to go in next to that stitch and get it in the exact same spot. And it looks like it looks like it's off a little bit. So even though I counted them, looks like this horn is a little farther down than it needs to be. It actually needs to be up one. That looks pretty good. Let's try it on someone. If you have a mannequin head, then you try it on. Make sure it's even. If you don't, use your own. Or, in my case, I use my husband. He has a small head. And, yeah, now we weave in the ends. Basically, just want to make sure it's nice and secure. If you've got a lot of long thread like I do, take advantage and weave in as much as you can. And just do that with the rest of the thread. This was already weaved in. There are some great books on 
different techniques for weaving in ends. So one thing I do need to spend a little time on at some point. Basically you want to hide it as much as you possibly can. You don't really want to see it at all. Make sure those bobbles stick out nice and far. They can get smushed. And there you have it. A very handsome Viking helmet. If you enjoy my tutorials, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for instant notifications. Thank you for dropping by and happy crocheting.